In this video, we're gonna take those pesky little selection edge fringe thingies uh, that look like this, and we are gonna make them look like this, but with a couple of, or three different ways to do it, because not one always works for everything. Folks, my name is Matt Kluskowski. Welcome to the latest video. This is a free bonus video for my Photoshop compositing course. If you want to grab the photos I'm using, just check below the video, check the description. Um, if you look down there somewhere below, you will see a place to download those photos. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive in and get started here. So what I have here is that I've actually got, I've got a document open. So I've, I've got my background. One of the things that I do is I, I, place, I place the subject on top of the backgrounds as soon as possible. And you're gonna see why in a second here, once we get into the selection, because I don't wanna do, I, I might as well get them in their background so I can see how my selection is gonna look as I, as I start to work. Then the only other thing that I did ahead of time here is I went and grabbed my quick selection tool, hit the right bracket key so I had a, a larger larger brush here and I went and just kind of just painted in and outlined everything inside of there and then this is what took a few minutes and that's why I'm kind of sparing you from the tediousness of it is I zoomed in command or control plus hit the left bracket key made the brush a little bit smaller and I'll go in and I'll just try to get every little edge that I possibly can Okay, I use the spacebar key, press spacebar, gives you a little hand grabber, move that around, paint in on some of those edges if I missed anything. And, um, and I'll just try to get in there and get as close as I can because it's easier to do all of that work now. Okay, so and for those of you that always say, hey, you always use a perfect background. Obviously, as you can see here, this is not a perfect background. So uh, I tried to make it perfect, but there just wasn't enough sheet and there wasn't enough space to, to go in there and pull it off. Uh, but, but that's the process. That's the, the beginning of the process of a composite. And whether it's a person, place, thing, trees, hair, a cup, whatever it happened, a dog, um, that's, that's kind of the start of this, okay? Just take that quick selection tool and make your first outline. It doesn't have to be perfect yet, especially if there's hair, you don't even worry about hair at this point. Now, the next part, we're gonna go up here to the top and we're gonna go to the select and mask dialog box. It's gonna open up the, the, the place where we do, you know, any refining that we have for this. And here's the key. So the reason why I put this, this, this layer into the document first is because you might see onion skin as your choice up here um, or marching ants, which doesn't help us. The red overlay doesn't help us. Black or white could help us. But the problem is, is, is we don't know. You have to, you have to get your, your subject onto their background. If I were to put this subject on a bright background, I'm done. They look great. I don't have any defringing to do. We could be, we could be done here. If I were to put them on a black background, I could have a lot of work to do. So we don't want to do work that we don't have to do. So that's why I choose on layers because now I could see exactly what they look like on their document. I don't have any guessing to do and I'm not going to do any extra work. So I choose on layers. I usually put a radius up about one or two pixels here. That'll just kind of smooth and refine the edge a little bit and kind of just smooth out the, the selection that you made. But here's the, uh, here's the problem. So we will zoom in. Um, if they had hair, I will go in here with the refine brush. And many of the projects in my Photoshop compositing course have hair, but rather than, than do a 25 minute video for you here, I wanted to concentrate on the edge fringe. But I'd go along here and kind of just refine the edge. I'd, I'd paint on any places that have hair and as I go through here and you'll start to see some of that appear. That's step number one. Step number two is we go down here and we see we have a fringe, all right? So we have a fringe. Oh, sorry, I got my, my rotating document on here. I gotta turn that off. <laughs> um, we've got a little edge fringe down there. Well, the easy way to get rid of it, we'll, we'll call this method number one. Easy way to get rid of it, decontaminate colors. See a little checkbox right down here? I can turn that on, it's gone. Try it, all right? My first suggestion, I talk about this a lot. I like to give you a repertoire. You build this repertoire of things to do. So in that repertoire becomes, try this. It's the easiest way to go. Problem is, and I picked the photo, I made sure I picked the photo it didn't work with. Problem is, is sometimes it will leave you, see that pixelated edge? It's just 
something's not right there, right? Um, it just gets blocky and pixelated and solid. There's no edge to it. And especially around hair, it can really ruin uh, the places around hair. So unfortunately we can't do that. If you wanna know a little bit about what's going on behind the scenes, if you look under output two, it's actually forcing us to go to a new layer. And so what it does is it makes a copy of your image, a new layer with the layer mask. But the really interesting thing is, is if you delete that layer mask that's on that new layer, you will see it actually went into the layer and permanent, and it did that to the edge. And it really restricts what we're able to do with the photo later on too, if we ever needed to refine that edge. So that's why that method doesn't always work. Give it a try. If it looks good, go with it. It's fast and it's easy. But in this case, it didn't work. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna go and turn that off. We're gonna output this to a layer mask. Click okay. And so now we've got our, our document on the, here, I'll back out for you. We can see everything. <laughs> I, so Photoshop has this little, you can kind of use your touchpad and you can see here I can rotate around and it's probably my nemesis as far as everything here because I hate when it gets rotated. So I need to go back in there and turn it off. Anyway, you'll see that we have a, uh, a, little, a little fringe going around there. And by the way, in case you haven't noticed, I'm not the kind of guy that really cuts out my little mess ups in there. And I bring that up for a, a good reason. Something I did very different in my Photoshop compositing courses, I left a lot of the failures in there because I think it's such an essential tool. If you, all you see is perfection, every single time you watch a tutorial, you're like, hey, everybody's perfect. And how come mine doesn't ever look like that? So I actually walk through a lot of failures, something I can't do in a book or a magazine or even in a blog article. I walk through a lot of failures. You'll watch me screw up and then you'll hear me say, all right, well, that doesn't look good. Why doesn't it look good? What do we do instead? So you'll actually see a lot of things that, that I thought would work that don't work. Anyway, we got our fringe. Now, method number, we'll call this 1.5. I'm not even gonna count it as, as one of the, the three methods. We could zoom in, press B for your brush tool, set the foreground color to black, and we have our layer mask over here. And we could painstakingly paint around that little edge and try to get rid of it with our layer mask, okay? So, not my favorite way to do it. Uh, it takes a long time, but I'm not saying you won't end up there. There might be times and places in your, your photos where you do end up doing that, but we're gonna try to make this a little bit easier. The second way involves us to do something a little bit destructive to the photo where we have to take it off the layer mask. Let me show you what I mean. So if I go up here and I, uh, I click on my layer and I go up here to the layer menu, you're gonna see some of these matting settings down here. And you're gonna see color decontaminate, defringe. Well, number one, color decontaminate, it does the same thing that the checkbox did back in the, in the other dialog box. So that's not an option. Defringe works really good, but the problem is, and let's zoom in just so here, let me cancel out of there. I'll zoom in just so you can see. I can go layer, matting, defringe. I'll do one pixel, which is what I usually do. And nothing happens. And that's because the layer has a layer mask. And so it, it, that feature doesn't work with the layer with the layer mask. So we have to take our subject off onto its own layer. So what I'll do on a commander control click on the, the layer mask here, it's gonna put a selection around that layer. Then I'm gonna go click on the layer thumbnail and press command J on the Mac or control J on the PC. And that pushes this guy up onto its own layer we can hide the layer below because now we don't need it. Um, it is not on a layer mask. I'm okay with that. I, I, I'm not the person that insists on working on layer masks all the time. They have their place, but sometimes it's, it's okay to get it off, especially when you feel comfortable that you've done your selection as far as you can go. So now let's zoom in here and take a look down here. So we can see our fringe. We're gonna go up here to layer, matting, defringe. I'll try one pixel. If, if one pixel doesn't work, I try two, but let's give it a try. Bam, <laughs> look at that. That's before, after, before, after. 
pretty cool. So it goes in there and it gets rid of that fringe all the way around the whole thing. So think of that as method number two, works really good. In fact, that's that's probably my go-to method the, the most times. That's, that's what I find myself using the most. All right, let's, uh, let's undo here, back up, and let's get into method number three. Method number three is one I stumbled on probably seven years ago. Um, it's, I call it the inner glow method, and I literally did stumble on it, and it, it'll, it'll save you a lot of times if nothing else works and you get those fringes. I'm actually gonna show you an example on wispy hair too. But what we do is we'll uh, I'll zoom in on our subject again, and we're gonna double click this layer and open up our layer style dialog. I'm gonna click on inner glow. Now, you might see different settings here. You might, yours might be set to white and different blend modes and whatnot. So what I can say is if, if you have a white fringe, you wanna counteract it. So you wanna make sure you set your blend mode to multiply, and then you're gonna to go to your color picker and then just go click on an edge near the skin, click okay, and you'll see it gets rid of the fringe. Now depending on the size you have it set to, you'll see it creeps in further and further. So you have to be careful. So you might not want to go up that high with it. All right, keep a lower size setting and you can always come in here and you can adjust the opacity of that as well. So that's before and then that's after, okay? So that is an option, okay? It works really good. I actually like the matting option better on this photo, but I do wanna show you a photo where I think you'll, uh, you'll, you'll kind of agree with me on this one. So here we have, here we've got, and I'm gonna, I, I, would, never, I would never put this on a, on a black background, but I'm gonna make it hard. I'm gonna make it hard on ourselves. So let's go add a layer here and I will fill that layer with black. Again, it's, it's a bright, sunny photo and it's, it's dark, black is moody. You would never mix the two together because you would never get a successful composite from that. But I'll do it, like, like just so we can see what this does. I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna double click the layer and let's go over here to Inner Glow. And I'm really paying attention to the hair because we know the matting method and uh, brushes and whatnot will work on on the, the edge of the skin. The hair is usually what we're most concerned with because that's where we see the biggest problems. So just look at it. I mean, I didn't even do anything yet. I left the settings from the last photo, but we could go over here and click. And again, adjust your size, adjust your opacity. But that is a huge one if you ever find you can't get rid of the fringes around people's hair. Okay, now method number three, I'm actually gonna leave this one open because I didn't really have it on the last one because there was no wispy hair, is you will see little sometimes chunks of fringe left inside the hair or could be on the edges of the hair. I can see actually a little bit of it. I can see actually a little bit of it over here and a little bit over here. Method number three is the burn tool, okay? We are gonna go over to the toolbox. You can press the letter O. Uh, it's located right under the dodge tool. We go to the burn tool. I use midtones and I set the exposure to about 20% and then go make sure you click on your layer, not the layer mask or anything. And then all I do is I go in here and I burn it away. If it's dark hair, we use burn. If it were bright hair, bright hair with something darker on the fringe then I would use dodge or even not even hair, but trees, whatever your subject is. If it were a, a darker fringe, I would use the opposite. I'd use the dodge tool, but we go in here and we burn those little edges away. And that's what helps them mix and fit into that dark background a little bit more. Okay. And also you can experiment. I used midtones on this photo. You can also experiment with the shadows options. Sometimes that one uh, will work pretty good as well. Well, folks, I do hope you will check out my Photoshop compositing course. You can find out more over at mattk.com slash compositing. You can also download the images here if you want to try this out on your own. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you again real soon.